this video, we'll go over how to set up the HTP Invertig 251 and have it completely ready to weld. All the different connections, as well as an overview of the control panel. This is part of a video owner's manual series. In the last video, I gave an overview of the capabilities of the machine. In the following videos, I'll show you how to set the machine and use the basic and advanced TIG welding features, as well as the stick welding capabilities of the machine. With the machine unpacked, as well as all of the accessories, we can start to connect everything and get it set up and ready to weld. We'll start here on the front of the machine by connecting the work clamp. It always goes in this port, you can see with that symbol there, regardless of whether your TIG or stick welding, and the polarity is automatically adjusted within the machine electronically. You can use an optional electrode holder if you are stick welding, and then connect it right to the other DINs connector, and these are the only connections that you'll need to make other than power to the machine for stick welding. We're going to set this up for TIG welding right now, and so I'll use a remote amperage control, and this just connects to that 14-pin plug right there. This is also compatible with Miller accessories, so you can interface with equipment that works with that. Next is the torch, and it's a simple gas connection right here on the front of the machine. Tighten it down and then just snug with a wrench, not overly tight, and follow that up with the electrical connection here in this DINs connector. That's all there is to connecting the accessories on the front of the machine. Now we'll turn our attention to the back to connect the shielding gas. Make sure your shielding gas cylinder is secured and crack the valve to blow any dirt or debris out of the way so it doesn't end up in your regulator. The regulator connects onto the neck of the bottle right here, and then you can connect the included hose to the other side of the regulator. Use a wrench to snug each of these connections to make sure that you don't have any leaks, and then we'll move to the back of the machine. The inlet port is right here near the bottom, so we can connect the hose there, and also on the back of the machine is the power switch, as well as a plug for an optional water cooler if you want to power a water cooler through the machine. Now we can set our gas flow, so turn on the cylinder and open it all the way to the top, and then turn the regulator to your desired flow rate. Usually that should be about twice your cup size in cubic feet per hour. After you finish welding, it's a best practice to turn the cylinder off, relieve any pressure from the hose, and then loosen the knob on the regulator to help it last a little longer. There's a pre-installed plug for 240 volt outlet, so you can connect it there, or use the included adapter if you have the dual voltage version. If you are using the dual voltage version, you can connect it directly to a 120 volt outlet. You don't have to change any settings or wiring within the machine. It'll automatically adjust. Let's turn on the machine and take a look at the front panel. There are five buttons along the bottom and their function is indicated in the bottom of the screen. There's also an encoder wheel and that encoder wheel also functions as a button to allow you to make selections within the menu. Right here we can move through and select some of the options to set up to weld. We'll go over those in more detail in later videos, but I'll show you a couple things here in the setup menu. You can click purge to purge the argon through the line without uh, creating a live torch. And the factory reset button there will get you back where you started, just like a brand new machine, anytime you'd like. Okay, well the machine is all set up and ready to weld. In the following videos, I'll go over the basic and advanced TIG welding features as well as the stick welding capabilities of the machine.